So first of all, I was looking at your social media. I, I mean, everybody already talked about it. Your, your, your bags. Have you, have, have you got any back uh, yet or not yet? Not yet. I did talk to um, my sister. She has some contacts, and they told me that my bag has been put on a flight last night. It should be on the ground here today. So I need to make the moves to talk to the right people and get that bag here. How much of a headache has has it been for you to not have your stuff here? Man, it can be a huge headache. You know, people can let that hinder their focus and all that stuff. Um, it definitely is a hindrance, you know. There's no escaping that. But um, I've been able to handle it and deal with it, you know. Like I said, water on a duck's back rolls right off. And, and I was looking at the embedded. I was talking about your bag, how much it means to you. To, it's the same bag you use in, in every travel you have to do. So not to not be here with, it, with, with your stuff in your bag, it must be uh, bad for you. You must, you, you must be, be pissed off with, with, with United about it. Well, um, I, I look at it like this, right? And for the longest, this has been sort of like a tradition, you know? But um, every time I go to do something, or every time I, especially whenever I leave home, you know, something goes not what you, you know, not quite right. Like this time around, you know, the day before my daughter was just fine. I get here, call my wife, she says my daughter's sick, got a fever, not feeling good at all. My dog has been sick for a while, but he's been okay. But you know, when I get here, I call her, she says my dog and shat all over the house. And it ain't like dog turds, you know, it's like black tar seeping into the carpet and you know, not really good, but, um, and then I get here again, my bag isn't here, you know, all my stuff that's in my bag, and uh, it's, you know, it's always frustrating when you hear this type of things, and, and, but over the years, I've not sort of come to expect something bad to happen, but when it does happen, I sort of expect something really good to happen in the end. I'm a dog person, so I definitely feel your pain there, and how's your daughter? Is she better? Yeah, my wife says she's she's a little bit better. She's a lot better, you know. She sent her, you know, she was able to go back to school and um, yeah, they're doing good down there. So yeah, is it, is it more more complicated to be so far away from them and getting to focus on such a big fight and having to deal with having to have this 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 problem back home? That's never fun, you know. Um, it's hard, you know, especially sorry me being as close to my family as I am. I don't like not being there, being able to help solve problems, you know. Um, but my wife is totally, is, 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 you know, grade A, you know, top of the line, you know. She is a hard working woman, one of the hardest working women I've ever known. One of the greatest mothers I've ever known. She's not, you know, my only wife, so yeah, she's the greatest wife I've ever known. So, um, you know, she handles business big time, man. I can't, like, thank her enough. I can't say how much, you know, how important she is to the whole equation, you know. So um, I'm, I'm, I'll happily leave things in her hands when I'm gone, you know, and uh, she's very capable and she's very uh, competent in what she's doing, you know, best mother in the world, I'd say. And she's been a huge help since you, in your, your army days, right? When, when, when you left the army and you had to find a job and she was helping paying bills and all that, right? I mean, my wife doesn't work. I mean, she doesn't work for somebody else, you know. She works for herself and the family. And uh, that's a big job in itself. A lot of people yeah. tend to... Uh, How did you to, to, to find jobs and get paid to bring money home, right? Well, um, when, I did, when, I, when I was kicked out of the Army, you know, it was, uh, it was her who pushed me, say, you know, to get the job that I had, you know, even though I didn't even want to do that job, you know, I knew I didn't want to do it, but I did it because I had to. It's my obligation to take care of my family. And I, you know, happily did it for X amount of years. And, and, and at the same time, I did what I had to do to get to where I wanted to be, which is here right now. But, um, you know, we both do what we got to do. And uh, again, she's been a huge uh, part of that equation. So what, what happened in the army that you got kicked out? I failed a drug test. You know, I, smell, I, I got deployed, I come home, you know what I'm saying? I celebrate, smoke some weed with my family. I get back, I get drug tested, and they said, yeah, bye, you know, for failing drug tests. When I've seen people get, you know, slaps on the hands for way less. So uh, I don't want to say anything bad, 
about you know that, but uh, I have my opinion, I have my uh, my thoughts on that, and I'm going to keep those to myself. One thing I will say is that you know my experience in the army has you know been very uh, very uh, helpful, very useful. My skills that I've learned. So I'm very appreciative of the experiences that I got while I was in there, the people that I've met while I was in there. Um, I don't like the way it ended. You know, I don't think it was fair. I don't think it was right. But it's all good. You know, it worked out. Again, like I said before, something bad happens, something really good happens. I got the job I needed. You know what I'm saying? I was able to start fighting, which is, what I, which is one of the things that um, made me not too happy being in the Army. I, I wanted to do combatives, but, you know, they wanted me to check on any trucks for oil leaks and shit like that when trucks isn't even my job but um that's the army for you and uh what more can you expect um but again you know i got i did acquire some good skills and uh it helped me get to where i am now so i'm very appreciative of the experience was, was that your first time smoking weed and did you continue doing it until, until these days of course not on on when you're, you have a fight you, you can't do it but you know what <laughs> I talked to my mama about this <laughs> the other day. She said I need to be careful what I say on the uh, on the mic. But if I lie, it's not illegal depending on where you it's live. Not illegal, but you know I'm not a liar. I know I'm, a, and I'm not afraid for people to see who I am and and where I'm from and what I do. So uh, no, it's not my first time smoking weed. You know I don't. You're not gonna join an organization and say you can't smoke weed and to just do it for the first time. That's it's not smart. It wasn't smart to do it, but you know, it is what it is. And uh, to be honest, I'm appreciative of it, you know, because it, again, if it wasn't for me smoking, I wouldn't have gotten kicked out. I wouldn't have ended up in Alaska. I wouldn't have ended up fighting. I wouldn't have gotten the UFC. I wouldn't be here right now. Um, but I've been smoking for a while, man. I don't smoke like profusely, and I definitely don't let it hinder what I need to do. You know, I don't let it stop me from doing my job or anything like that. Um, I'm very private with my life, you know, so I don't go out flaunting the things that I do. Um, but, you know, if you want to call it a vice, that's the only one. I don't think of it as a vice. I, I think of it as a, I don't know what I think of it as, but I like it. And I'm not going to lie about it, you know. Um, and yeah, a lot of fighters that use it and, and see it as a benefit for Post training and all that to recovery is that something you 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 used to feel that too? Well, it definitely has its benefits as far as uh, recovery and, and all that stuff, you know. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I was using it before I was fighting, mm -hmm. and uh, I like to do it. It's definitely relaxing, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, I like it. You know, got, you know, it's been put here. It, it grows here naturally. You know, what I'm saying it's not something. Some. I mean, they're doing shit to it now, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's been here for however long trees have been growing you know so uh you know it's a vegetable <laughs> you look very very uh, relaxed here in rio going to, to such a big fight against anderson silva how how surreal is this after this roller coaster that you've been in your personal life in your uh, career in mma how how surreal is it be to be here in rio fighting a guy like anderson Silva? it's huge man it's uh man you can't, it's hard to explain, you know, because I try not to put too much thought in how amazing this is and, you know, getting all uh, dewy-eyed about it. But uh, it is definitely a, a huge thing, a huge uh, position to be in. Um, and uh, I'm going to make the most of it. Um, <clears throat> all the respect to my opponent, you know. I definitely recognize what he's done, and I'm still a huge fan of his. But when I get in that octagon, you know, not to say he's going to be my enemy, but I'm going to do my best to break him in every way, shape, and form. What goes through through your mind when you look back to to our UFC debut when you had to create a GoFundMe campaign to to pay for your costs in, in camp, and now you're fighting uh, a former champion? What when 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 you think about that, what what goes through through your mind? I need to do another GoFundMe. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But uh, I mean, I've come a long way, you know, a long way. And, and that's the thing, you know what I'm saying, I had, and that's why I couldn't continue working that job, you know, working for the FAA because I wasn't becoming financially liberated doing that, you know what I'm saying? That's the type of thing you do for 30, 40, 50 years and then enjoy the rest of your life afterwards. And I don't think that's living. I think that is the opposite of living. I think that's waiting to die, you know, working for somebody else. 
um, I'd rather work for myself. So I started doing martial arts and I didn't really expect to, um, not that I didn't expect to, but I didn't put any much, I didn't put much uh, thought into where this could end up, where I can go with this. I just knew I was going to do the best that I can and go as far as I can. And uh, here I am, man, doing really big things for the sport and uh, getting a lot of attention for it. And, uh, you know, I'm taking it with stride. You know, I'm relaxing everything I do. Again, I'm unfazed. I have, since moving to Arizona, I've, uh, you know, had a lot of freedom. You know what I'm saying? I'm not working 10 hours a day, trying to train five hours a night. You know, I have a lot of time. I'll go to the gym, three, four hours, go home, three, four hours, go to the gym, three, four hours, come home for the rest of the night. And I'm able to see my family more. I'm able to also able to uh, do things to help enhance myself, you know, learning new things, uh, learning the right things, to be honest. You know, not being blinded by a lot of the uh, tra entrapments that the world has created, you know. Um, and that in itself has been liberating, you know. Um, I have way more confidence since learning these things. You know, I, I mentioned them in my last fight, Jamal Milton, you know, Lighthouse, uh, Young Pharaoh. Um, these, again, these two, these two guys have, uh, have continued doing their job, you know what I'm saying? And their job is helping people like me, people who, you know, they may not have met fir firsthand. A lot of me, you know, a lot of people who, you know, they probably won't see in their lifetime, but the information that they're putting out is, uh, for me, has been priceless. You know, better than any any of the all the schooling I've had. Better than my college experience or my uh, college and army experiences. You know, and if you don't know your potential, you know, you don't know what to do to get, you know, to live the best life you can live. And I'm living I'm living real good right now. I'm not rich or anything like that, but uh, that's Again, that's not my ultimate goal in life, you know. My ultimate goal in life is to ascend, you know, <clears throat> past human existence. And uh, I can get deep, man. You want to keep going? <laughs> you know, um, just really ascension is my ultimate goal. Continuing rising, you know, like the sun. And then if, if I come down, you know, I'll come all right, I'll go around full circle and I'll rise again. And that's not, I know that's what I'm capable of. Something bad happens, something good's gonna happen. The sun sets and then it rises again. It's automatic, that's the way of the world, it's the way of the universe. And uh, I operate, and I, and I love operating on that frequency, not on the lower ones.